guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to be doing a Crescent City book review. Woo woo! This is Sam, I am Colette, welcome back to Introverted Reading, and we're just gonna get started with it, I guess. Yeah, so this week, well not this week, a couple weeks ago, we both read Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. It is the first book in her new series. The first book is House of Earth and Blood. And this book is definitely an adult fantasy book. We are going to give you some warnings for this book. This book definitely has language not suitable for younger readers. It also has some violence that might not be suitable for younger and or older readers, depending on how well you take violence. It also includes mild bits of sexual content. If that's not your jam and that's not for you, this book also might not be your jam and or for you. If those things are your jam or you are just generally okay with them, this book <laughs> might be your jam. <laughs> It's all just a big jam. <laughs> How many times can we say that in a sentence? So we're gonna give you a quick um, summary of Crescent City. This is going to be non-spoiler and then later Sam will give you a time code for when you should skip to once again non-spoiler sections if you have not read Crescent City yet. As we know it is a very hefty book and not everyone has gotten to it yet. And for even the best of readers it could take you just a little bit of time to read it. Yes. All right, so Crescent City is a more modern fae type of story. If you have read the rest of Sarah J. Mass's books, you know that she usually does stories involving fae, but they are usually set in a more middle of medieval time type of Fantical setting. Set. Yeah, so uh, this is a new world, but it's set in a city that is like New York City, and it's modern day, so there are cell phones and stuff, but it has... Pretty much every mythical creature that you could ever think of. If there you are... wanted a mythical creature in a book, you'll probably find it in there. Yes. So we've got Demi Fay, Fay, just like the original Sarah J. Mass books, but now we are adding werewolves, werewolves, archangels, fallen angels, different types of. So it's a lot of. It is like it's an adult fantasy. There are a lot of characters and a lot of. And humans. And there are humans within this city. There's a lot of Fay, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of humans. Yeah. So. This story follows a girl named Bryce Quinlan. She is a demi fay and the story basically starts off by talking about her and her and her friends, Danica. And the pack of devils. The pack Danica of devils. is a werewolf. She is also the most powerful werewolf to ever be seen and the leader of the pack of devils, which is the city's best, best defense werewolf pack. Yes. Um, it also starts off following her other friends, Fury and Juniper. Juniper, and basically Bryce is a party girl. She goes to parties. She has a pretty ordinary job and life. She works at an antique store. She's just living her life with her friends and her best friend, Danica. But something tragic happens. But then, tragedy <laughs> strikes. <laughs> and this story turns into a fantasy murder mystery novel. It's a wonderful bum, bum, story. Bum. If you were a fan of a good, good mystery novel, like this book, as long as you're down yes. for a little bit of fantasy. It is a hefty book, and again, it's an adult fantasy. The warnings still apply, but also because it is adult fantasy, it has a lot of stuff packed into it, and it can get confusing at times. So, I'm just gonna leave it at that. This book, we have both given it a magical rating out of five. I'm gonna give this book a four and a half out of five. And I'm giving it a four out of five. And we'll tell you why later. So, But yeah. first, first, pause, wait, if you don't want Crescent City to be spoiled for you, stop watching now. We're about to talk about things that are gonna spoil Crescent City for you if you haven't already read it. Now, if you want to avoid the spoilers, go to whatever time is right here on the screen. That's gonna be when the spoilers go away. Until then, we're gonna talk about the things that may or may not spoil the book for you just for your awareness. We're going to start talking about the four pretty much main characters main of characters. this story, this book. So, so you start with two best friends, Bryce and Danica. Yes. I'm going to let Colette tell you about Bryce and then I'll tell you about Danica because Colette is definitely more of a Bryce and I am definitely more viable with Danica. All right, so Bryce, as I mentioned before, is a demi fay lives a pretty normal life. Danica and Bryce did meet in college, and that's when they became best friends. They were roommates. She works at an antique shop, and before the tragic thing that happens with Danica, they're just pretty much living a great life. Living their best lives. They're chilling. Um, the fun thing about Bryce, though, is that her father is the king of one of the districts within Crescent City, basically the king of the Fae. So, but she has no relationship with her father. Things went wrong and 
her mom had a relationship with him that did not end well because she is human, which does make Bryce demi fay But she does have an older half brother named Rune, who we will talk about little in bit. a little bit. Um, Bryce really is, she loves to go for a run. She's very athletic. She is a dancer, which is why I love her so much because I myself am a dancer. But Bryce is not able to be in a ballet company, which was her big dream because of her demi fay body type, um, which is very sad to me in my my opinion. It is um, relatively sad for most yeah. people. Um, Bryce had a previous relationship with a guy named Reed, who in the very first couple <laughs> chapters she breaks up with. Um, <laughs> to read. To read. <laughs> but yeah, Bryce is a big party girl and she's She's really great, and she also has a weird obsession with basically their world's equivalent of My Little Ponies, Jelly Jubilee, um, which I find hilarious, so. All right. Yeah, that's Bryce. But on the flip side of that coin, you have Danica. Danica, as we mentioned before, is a werewolf and the leader of the Pack of Devils. But not only is Danica a regular werewolf, she is the most powerful werewolf since her grandfather, which as you might imagine, pisses off her mother to no end. Like, actually to no end. Like, her mom actually definitely hates it. But Danica's walking around. She's living her best life. Danica is very fun. She's very free-spirited. And she loves to be hang out. She likes to hang out with her friends. She likes to hang out with a pack of devils. She's very much like, interested in her friendships. Danica wears her signature leather jacket with the back embroidered through love all is possible. A jacket she will eventually, after her death, pass down to Bryce. Yes, I did say her death. Danica does die within the first 200 pages, along with Connor, the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Connor. The new Sam! <laughs> and the pack of devils. Which is sad, but we'll get there in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> but once you get Bryce, Bryce and Danica, you have two more characters that we should probably introduce, and that would be Rune and Hunt. So Rune, as I mentioned before, is Bryce's older half-brother, and Rune is, is he full fae? He, He's full fae. He is full fae, and he is the prince of the fae district. That He's the his, starborn prince. He's the, the starborn fae. prince, which um, they have a special power kind of thing that, like, light, just, they, 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 they exude light. light. They do the, the light flash flash. <laughs> flash flash. So... He is the starborn fae prince of that district. He and Bryce originally, when they first met, had a very good relationship, but then something happened and they completely fell out. And when we first meet them, they have a really bad relationship, which eventually they bring back together and they have an amazing relationship at the end. Because we love Rune. Because we love Rune. He's really great. Um, yeah, that's like it with... And then on the other side of Rune, you have Hunt, fallen angel, general badass, and the actual king of saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. <laughs> yes. Hunt is a fallen angel, and he is tasked to assist Bryce on their glorious quest throughout the book. Hunt is a very gentle character, once you can break down the hard, I can say the wrong thing at the wrong time exterior. And he's actually starts to be quite a fun character. You learn that he is a expert marksman which yeah damn he's also just really chill at some parts when he's living with um bryce in her apartment he's got a backwards baseball cap and sweatpants and, and he likes to watch a good sunball game he loves a good sunball game and he actually was getting into one of those romantic like drama type thing that's like um it's their equivalent of The Bachelor, pretty much. They, he was watching that with Bryce, and he really enjoyed it, and I thought that was really funny. <laughs> He's just a really solidly good character, and good he is this book's main love interest for our main character, Bryce. <laughs> so, after the basic beginning of the story, the devil, Danica and the Pack of Devils are brutally murdered, and Bryce finds them. Now before this happened, literally hours before this happened, Bryce and Connor were having, they were starting a relationship. Connor had had a crush on Bryce for years. And Bryce always said no, because she doesn't like alpha holes, which is their equivalent of um, alpha assholes. male al assholes. Yes, yeah, so, an so alpha male. Um, he's an alpha male. So she, but they, she finally agreed that she would go on a date with Connor. She goes out and goes partying because she clubbing. feels like she goes clubbing. Woo -woo. I believe with Fury and Juniper, Juniper and Fury. she goes, Danica stays behind because they had just solved a thing. No, what's his name was out of prison. Yeah. Yeah. 
they what was his name? No, they were spending, they, after they did duty, they liked to spend the, the day together. Yeah. So after the Pack of Devils had spent duty together, they liked to stay and watch the Sunball game, hang out in Danica and Bryce's apartment. So Bryce went out and she went clubbing with Fury and Juniper. When she got back, she was a bit drugged, um, because she does like to do that. In the beginning of the book, she does drink and she does do drugs. She likes to party a lot. And she comes back and she finds that Danica and the entire pack of devils has been basically like ripped to ribbons. They are dead. They, they are, are just dead. Completely dead in her apartment. And a monster demon runs out of the apartment. Keep in mind she is still drugged. And she stumbles trying to catch up to it, seeing that she could kill it when she stumbles upon it attacking Michael. Micah. 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 <laughs> The Archangel, who essentially rules the entirety of the city. Yeah, and he is currently being attacked by this demon that they do not know what it is yet. Bryce comes and she basically saves him and then she... Because what, what else is an inebriated girl going to do but save the leader of an entire city? Yes. And when this all happens, she gets very injured, a slash to her thigh from this demon. It runs off and that's when Hunt show up and bring her in for questioning and then yeah. the story doesn't get better from there yeah. after there you have about an 18th month to two year time gap in which Bryce moves into a new apartment that Danica bought before she died and was trying to convince Bryce to move into but since the apartment was paid off and Bryce is generally pretty close to broke she went ahead and moved in the apartment is full of wards, it's full of different defensive spells and weapons and things to keep bad people out and keep Bryce very safely inside. And Bryce goes back to her daily schedule of her usual shenanigans. By shenanigans, I mean she works out by running at some point during the day, she goes to work, and then she goes back home. Yes, Bryce, after the death of her friends as well as Connor, pretty much just stops partying except for when she has to do a job for her boss. She stops drinking, she stops doing drugs, she stops doing pretty much all of that. Yeah, she stops being party girl Bryce. Yes. And her friendship with Fury kind of drops off the, the deep end and she only really has Juniper to talk to occasionally when Juniper isn't busy in the ballet company that she is in. So then Micah shows up one day which is weird because normally the leader of a city does not show up in an antique shop that you work at. But Micah shows up one day with Hunt and has a proposition for the two of them. Bryce gets to help down who killed Danica and the pack of devils with Hunt's assistance. And she gets to figure it out who killed her friend, which is kind of the only thing she's wanted to do for two years now. Yeah, this part was just, you know, it was sad. But... Bryce does accept the offer and continues working her regular job while on top of that trying to figure out what happened to her best friend and the pack of devils. Yes, and then we later find out that it could have possibly been Danica who did it. Who did all of this. There is a whole period of time in which you are very heartbroken because could Danica have done this? Yeah. The rest of the book is Bryce and Hunt trying to solve the case. They go to many locations. Rune helps out a lot. Um, that's not really like, it's just a lot that goes on that we don't really have to go through every bit of it. It's the murder mystery part of it. Yeah. So we will leave that a surprise for your anticipation. So all of this is, while well, all of this is happening, the murder mystery, we find out in the beginning of the book that this thing called Luna's Horn was basically stolen and it was suspected to be terrorists. Yes. We later find out that it could have possibly been Danica who was the one to steal the horn basically as a conspiracy theory type situation and it's all very annoying. There's also the discovery of this drug that pretty much gives werewolves and humans in particular enough strength as much as say an immortal because they are mortal they don't have any powers we're human we don't have any powers it's supposed to give them the powers and strength of a an immortal it can literally tear people apart with their bare hands on this drug the problem is is that this drug once those people are uh, have it they lose control completely 100 percent. and they do not stop until they have turned, killed themselves killed they themselves. will tear themselves apart just as they've torn apart everyone else that they've hurt so what we find out is that micah pretty much says as well as hunt that Danica took this drug in order to become more powerful because there was talk about 
her having stolen the horn and things going down so she took this drug to become more powerful and she was the one who killed the pack of devils and then herself not the demon that they believed it to be which of course is a load of uh, bullshit yes we it's find out danica that is wonderful and beautiful but danica didn't take the drug micah gave it to her Yes, Micah was the one who gave Danica the drug to completely destroy the pack of devils because Danica had found information about this drug and about the stolen horn that could potentially destroy Micah. And not only did Micah give Danica the drug, but a whole part of the beginning of the book is that the last thing you hear Danica do is actually beg for her life. But it turns out Danica's not begging for her life, Danica's begging for the lives of her pack and begging herself not to do this. Which, what well, we know about the drug, wasn't possible. The drug did its thing and it's done. But, of course, Bryce is not satisfied with this answer. Mm -hmm. This is not a good answer for Bryce. And so Bryce does what all people naturally do when they're encountered with the situation of a large male figure coming at you ready to attack you. She struck back. <laughs> Yes, Micah enters the antique shop while the other Fae, the leaders of the other territories, are having this big meeting that happens once a year. So no one's able to really come and help her. Hunt included is there. And they aren't able to help her when Micah shows up basically to kill her because she figured out all of this information. But they are able to see her because the owner of the store is as many people who are who hoard illegal things superstitious so there's cameras all over the place so Bryce texts her boss real quick he's at the meeting and she said hey want to check them cameras and her boss pulled the cameras up in front of everyone so they can all see it they just can't really do anything yes and the character that we haven't mentioned yet was Lele and Syrinx so Lehaba we have a disagreement on how to pronounce I have her no idea how to we don't know how to pronounce her name at all I say Labaya I say that's Le not correct. I, I say Lehaba. Lehaba. <laughs> but we're gonna call her Lele. Now Lele. this Lele. 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 We're gonna settle on Lele. We're gonna call her Lele. That's what Bryce calls her. Um, this is at the point where I literally started crying. This is the part where you start crying and you don't stop till it's over. Yes. So Lele is a tiny little fire sprite, which sounds like you know she she protects the magical books that are in this antique shop because they are literally able to climb upstairs and destroy things and she keeps them in line yep. so when you know when Micah comes in the only thing that Lele knows to do to protect Bryce is sacrifice herself there is a big water tank in the basement where Lele guards the books and during an altercation in which Micah throws Sphinx which is a sphinx but it's like a dog like pet into the tank Bryce goes to get it and in the process of getting it away from the creature who lives in the tank she actually cracks the front of the tank and Lily may be small but she is mighty and she realizes that since Bryce got Micah locked in the bathroom she can actually break the tank but Bryce has to get out first and Lily's a fire sprite so she's not gonna make it through that never but it this part made me cry. I started crying when Styrinx was put into the giant tank because he can't swim and I thought he was going to drown and die. He ended up being okay because Bryce, Bryce, saved, wonderful. Bryce saved him but I started crying and I audibly was like no. Yeah I began crying as soon as it was clear that Lele was not going to make it through this endeavor. Yep. But that does not stop Bryce. Bryce takes the death of her friend, continues to move on and at the end of the day pulls one of the moves that I can only say I am immensely, <laughs> immensely impressed by, and shoots Micah. This is literally like my favorite part of the entire book. Assembles a shotgun right from off the wall, takes the bullet right out of the safe, and shoots him. And then, because he's an archangel, he basically blows up when he dies. And when an archangel dies, it pretty much rattles the entire, like, a city. Everyone knows that an archangel just dies, and he turned to ash. And what does Bryce do? vacuums him up. She vacuums up the ashes. Love that. But before Micah died, he realized where Luna's horn was. Okay, no. Before Danica dies, Bryce and Danica go out and get tattoos. And Bryce is very confused by the tattoos she gets the next day because she was very clearly drunk when it happened. Yes. But turns out the Luna's horn was actually tattooed into her arm. So she was Luna's horn. Luna's horn was part of her. And Wasn't Micah has back? opened many portals to another dimension. Wasn't it her back? I don't know, was it? Yeah. So pretty much Danica stole the horn, ground it up, 
snuck it into the tattoo ink while Bryce was drunk and was not looking. It was inked into her back and in the beginning Bryce is asking Danica why her tattoo is not healing like at all. Really, like at all. Like why is it not healing yet? Danica's had already healed and Bryce is a demi face so she does have healing abilities more, better than you know mere Human. mortals. So it was a little bit of a foreshadowing moment. moment. And then Micah used it to open many dimensions to many bad places. And as soon as she kills Micah she realized that there's literal monsters terrorizing the town now. Blah, 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 blah. People needed to get to safe houses quickly. Okay, um, Bryce vacuums up the ashes of Micah and heads out into the streets when she realizes that all of the portals have been opened and demons are running amok in the street, killing everyone, pretty much. They have safe houses along the streets that close and lock in case of something like this were to happen, and people are trying to get to those as fast as they possibly can. Bryce is currently in the process of getting to one of those while also killing some of the demons. Bryce is now out on the streets hunting and killing demons because she has previous experience from hunting them with Hunt during the whole murder mystery case. During this time, who shows up? Ethan! Ethan. Connor's little brother. He is the second in command in what is now post pack of devil <laughs> and Bryce puts out a call for help she is fighting she is not gonna win this and she asks for anyone who could help to help and lo and behold Ethan Ethan responds yes. and he brings his pack with him hunt rune Flynn fury the whole shebang they're also all on their way to help with the situation because there are demons apparently fury can summon helicopters that is true what ends, up, what ends up happening though is that while these safe houses are closing they have a set amount of time that they will stay open it is currently closing and bryce and ethan are running towards one of the safe houses to get inside but it's starting to close and bryce full-on pushes ethan into the safe house and bryce is left outside still fighting the demons and bryce knows how to close them she knows that she is probably one of the only ones who can actually close these portals which is stressful a little bit yes and that is when she actually releases to everyone that she is just as rune is starborn so she also produces the flashy flashy light light. Hey, she's actually the most powerful starborn to ever be seen. And we find that out when she drops. And so for the Fae, what they do is they drop into their immortality. Mm -hmm. It's a race down to the bottom of their power and then a race back up before they die. Usually this happens with someone else helping you back up and Danica and Bryce were supposed to make the drop together when they turned 27. That was when they decided it was going to be their peak age for making the drop and they were together. going to do it together and Connor and I believe Ethan were going to help them get back. The, the pack of devils was going to anchor them. Yeah, they were going to anchor them and bring them back. But so, Bryce is <laughs> completely alone <laughs> and she's going to make the drop. Hunt has landed pretty much when Bryce starts making the drop at the gate. He's fallen out of a helicopter and been hit by a large, large missile. And he's pretty much like almost dead. But Bryce is currently making the drop. And what happens when she reaches the bottom? There's Danica. Turns out that when she put her hand on, there's this set of pedestals around the city that when you put your hand on one and someone else puts their hand on another, you guys can communicate with each other. Yes, and it so takes a little bit of your power each time. And it turns out that when Bryce put her hand on and asked someone to help from the quarter of the dead, Danica put her hand on that one and actually angered Bryce to the drop. So there at the bottom is Danica. And Bryce looks at Danica and she says, I don't want to go going going back. back. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> the power of the drop creates the starlight that closes the rest of the portals. And for Bryce, she's done. She's done her job. She's done her duty. She can die now. But Danica says, heck no, <laughs> you're going back. And guess who also shows up? The Pack of Devils. They don't say anything to Bryce, though. It's nope. just Danica, but, but they're just there. But with their encouragement, they help Bryce rush all the way back out. And back at this big meeting of meetings, they're actually tracking how far Bryce is dropping. And Bryce not only drops further than they expected, but further than Rune, and further than they've seen anyone drop in recent history. And further than her father, which means that Bryce technically could take the throne of being, you know, in charge <laughs> of the Fae territory, but they haven't decided to discuss that yet. Saves the day. Bryce saves the day as one does. And 
her and Hunt, they head back to her apartment because they're both done with whatever's happening. Yes, and Hunt actually ends up moving in with Bryce in the end. Syrinx is still perfectly okay. Bryce is back to live in her life. She's working at the antique shop. They're back to live in their lives. Yes, and then now we're heading into the epilogue, which is literally just a page and a half, but it's following Jessica, who is the owner of the antique store, and Bryce's boss, and she's talking with a demon. A demon. They're talking with demons. Is it demons? Yeah, who's a demon? Ah, the white cat. Yeah, Adis, Prince of the Chasm, which we literally we found chasm. out chasm. Prince of the Chasm, which we found out previously has pretty much followed Bryce around in the form of a black cat and other animals, which is something we're not going to really get into. I feel like that's going to be discussed more in the next book, yeah. but she's talking with him. Seems like she's making a deal about something. So, but that is House of Earth and Blood. Yes, Crescent City, House so, of Earth and Blood. And so now we'll kind of explain, this is the end of of our spoiler warning from this point on there will be no more spoilers so if you're waiting for that to come back here we are you found us yay but we're now going to give a brief explanation of why we have rated this book the way we have all right so i gave this a four out of five stars mainly because i felt like it didn't need to be as long as it was and the beginning with the whole discussion of the different houses and the territories, even with the map. And I use maps a lot when I'm reading, especially with Sarah J. Mass's books, because yes. I read a lot of fantasy. A map is very helpful. I was still confused. With I gave it four and a half stars for um, only one of the same reasons. I gave it four and a half stars because the plot twist in the first 200 pages made me cry a lot, and I didn't like it. That's why. Because if that wouldn't have happened, I liked it more. <laughs> <laughs> but the plot twist happened and it made me cry. It also made me put the book down and I didn't pick it up for another month. Here, J. Mass. But from the book, obviously my favorite characters, my favorite yes. moments, I would have to say that out of all the characters in this book, I definitely have like three strong favorites. The first being Danica, because I love Danica so very much. Great. Hunt is my second because I think Hunt is one of my favorite of Sarah J. Mass's boys right now very into hunt very much really love his skills and my last has to be rune because rune <laughs> at every opportunity you meet him just surprises you a little bit more yeah with kind of how in like of a depth his character is and how great he just is character development at its finest what a boy um my favorite characters of course include bryce loved bryce i felt like i connected with bryce more than i've connected with any of her other Fem like lead female characters not the partying aspect but her dancing and her character as a whole I felt like I connected with a lot I also loved 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 Flynn I felt like Flynn is like the new Fenris and like that kind he of really that kind of character and just his relationship with Bryce and how she used to like have a huge crush on him I just I love him I love him and he's so sweet. Aha. Also, I love Cyrix so much. I want him. I want him to be my pet, my boy. He is so freaking cute. Don't do Maximus dirty like that. I still- okay, Maximus is my current dog, but I love Cyrix, and if I could have a Cyrix for myself, I would totally, totally want that. It is good. And then we've picked favorite odds from this book. There's a lot of moments to choose from. But I definitely have to say that without a doubt, my favorite moment happens during the final battle. Everyone is watching it from this big meeting room and they're all watching it happen. And Bryce is running around Crescent City wearing Danica's jacket instead of Danica wearing the jacket. And the grandpa is mostly blind. Danica's grandpa is almost totally blind. And he looks at one of the screens, double taps his heart and points out and says, protector. And Sabine, Danica's mother goes, that's not Danica, that's Bryce. And the grandpa goes, no, no protector sobbing the whole time i loved that scene i think it's such a heartwarming scene and i just think it's such a good moment in this like big terrible end battle yeah um my favorite moment i have one favorite moment that's a spoiler that she told me that i wasn't allowed to Not say to but i talked about it in the spoiler section and said that it was my favorite part but a non spoilery part that kind of just goes along with bryce's character as a whole you find out that bryce has an obsession with basically this world's my little ponies and she has jelly Jubi jubilee and hunt finds their her collection thinks that they're vibrators and it's just really funny it's a very 
good scene. It's a heartwarming scene. It's a heartwarming because she's just a normal with all with everything going on, she's still a normal girl. And she still has, you know, things that she loves. So So after reading Crescent City, I think it's safe to say that we both highly recommend this book. Yes. We both recommend it if you are have read Sarah J. Mass's previous series, if you've at least read A Court of Thorns and Roses. A Court of Thorns and Roses is new adult, so it's more like this in the content variety. But if you've still read Throne of Glass, and especially the most recent of the books, Empire Storms On, you're going to really enjoy Crescent City. Okay. I definitely recommend Crescent City if you are a fan of books like the Percy Jackson series. Obviously, this is an adult fantasy series, so it's a large step up in content topics. But it's got those same elements of the mythological aspects and characters kind of in that more present world setting, kind of like the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series does. Yes. Also, if you're a fan of the Red Queen series, this follows a very similar vibe fantasy-wise. The Red Queen series is also set in a more futuristic, dystopian setting, and this is set in a modern more New York City type technology vibe so they're very similar on that scale with fantasy wise so if you like Percy Jackson any Sarah J Mass books and the Red Queen series we would highly recommend that you read Crescent City House of Earth and Blood. It's a very good book and it's definitely our recommendation for you to read. Yes. But with that that's kind of the end of what we got. I'm still Sam that's still Colette. Follow us on social media. Our links are down in the bio below and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.